guys, welcome back to Demetra's Dishes. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a really beautiful, elegant tart, especially around this time of year. You can take this all the way through the summer. If you grow zucchinis and you want to know what you can do with them, you're going to want to make this beautiful tart. It's a rose zucchini tart. It's zucchini that's rolled up to look like little roses over a bed of ricotta and feta cheese. It's almost like a, like a tirapita type filling on the bottom made with puff pastry. It's delicious. We're going to go over the ingredients. As always, I'm going to show you how easy it is to put together and then uh, we're going to get started. So we're going to need some mint. If you have fresh mint growing, use it in this recipe. Mint and cheese really go beautifully together. So fresh mint, a little bit. If you don't have mint, um, I wouldn't do dry mint in this recipe. You could substitute any herb that you have growing, parsley, dill, whatever you like, basil, and any of those will work. So I'm using mint. I need a little bit of olive oil, a small sheet of puff pastry. It's about a half a pound of puff pastry, some black pepper, lots of uh, feta cheese, fresh ricotta cheese, salt, a little bit of flour to roll out, and of course, zucchini. I have about five zucchinis here. It all depends on how big your zucchinis are. That's how you're going to know how many you're going to need. So I would buy about between five to seven zucchinis just to be on the safe side. If you like, you could also do this. Um, a combination of zucchini and eggplant both work really, really well. Because the first step is to preheat your oven. So we're going to need a, a tart shell. This is about a 9 inch. You could use a 9 or a 10 inch tart shell. If you don't own one, I recommend you get one. It's great, not just for making savory tarts, but sweet tarts as well. I'll post a link in the description box down below. So that way you can get yourself one. Now, I'm just going to roll out my uh, puff pastry sheet with a little bit of flour just big enough so that way it fits in there. This should be good enough. So I'm just going to take my tart pan, put it in the center. No need to butter this up because puff pastry is loaded with butter. I'm just going to fill it in there and just kind of cut off the excess. And it does shrink up a little bit. But we're going to use these strips to fill in the sides. I use a little bit too much flour. Use a little less and it'll be much easier to work with. If it's a little bit sticky, it'll stick to the pan a little better than this. But the reason we're doing this first is because it's going to go in the freezer to set. So no worries, all the work will happen in the freezer. Let it come up a bit and you can kind of let it hang over the top that might keep it from falling down in the freezer. In the freezer, it might shrink up a little bit, but once it comes out, you could just press it back into shape. I'm gonna pop this in the freezer until I work on the rest of the steps of making this tart. All right, so now you're gonna need two things. You're gonna need a big pan. I like to use a cast iron pan. I use it in many recipes if you've been watching. If you don't have one, it's very inexpensive. I'll put the link to that one as well. And a mandolin to really get the really thin slices. Um, you can do it with a knife, but it's much easier with a mandolin. Um, I set it to the 1 32nd of an inch setting and it's very sharp. So be very careful not to cut slice yourself. You're going to want to use this little um, contraption that comes with it that protects your fingers. Trust me, use it no matter how much practice you have with it. You will definitely cut yourself if you don't use it. So make sure you do that. I'm just going to cut the edges the tips of my squash off. My pan is nice and hot. I have the heat setting set to very low because I, what I love about cast iron pans is that they retain the heat evenly throughout. So you don't have to worry about not cooking evenly on all sides. It gets evenly hot all around and you don't even need a high, high temperature. So now I'm going to slice this into um, you know, the long way, like this. So you're looking for really, really thin slices. So, so that way we're going to slightly cook them. So that way they roll up really nice and easily. I'm going to continue slicing these and then we'll cook them. So now I'm just going to increase my heat underneath my pan a little bit. I have all my slices ready. I'm going to put a tiny bit of olive oil on here. I'm 
We'll even brush it around just a little bit. And then I'm going to cook these for about 30 seconds on each side. They're not going to be fully, fully cooked because they're going to continue to cook in the oven, but we just want them soft enough so that way we can roll them up. And you can season them at this point with a little bit of salt. Okay, so I finished uh, searing my or pan frying my zucchini. Those are cooling a little bit. I took my tart out of the freezer and it's set really nicely. Sometimes what will happen don't, um, if while it's sitting in the freezer, it might fall over. Don't worry about it. Once you, it starts to soften up a bit, after you put the zucchini, you kind of press it back into place and it'll be just fine. I'm going to combine my two cheeses, my feta and my ricotta cheese. Put just a little bit of salt and I'm going to taste it later on because the feta is pretty salty. A little bit of black pepper. Just a tiny bit of olive oil. And I'm just going to chop up this mint. And put that in there. Mix it up. And the best thing about cooking is taste testing. Taste it and see if it needs a little more seasoning. Mmm. Very fresh. Doesn't need any more salt because the feta cheese is pretty salty. I'll put all of my cheese mixture right into, onto my puff pastry and just spread it out. Now, if you didn't want to um, put cheese underneath and you had pesto, you can make a really nice bed of pesto on the bottom. That will be beautiful also. Now, this is done. Now we're going to take our zucchini slices and we're just going to roll them up into these little like rose shapes. What you do, you want to take it, take one piece at a time and you just roll like that. Look at that. Okay, so now the oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's the reason why you didn't see me already pre-bake the pie crust. Usually when you're making a tart or a pie like this, the bottom crust gets pre-baked, and that's just another added step that we're gonna skip, and that's because we're starting the oven off on a higher temperature. So it's gonna bake at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes, then I'm gonna reduce the heat to 375 degrees, and let it cook for about 45 more minutes or until the whole thing is nice and golden. You're going to look for the crust especially to be really beautifully golden. I'm going to show you what it looks like as soon as it's done. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. You want the crust all around to be this beautiful golden brown. And honestly, it did take longer than 45 minutes once I reduced the temperature. It's going to be at least an hour more, so you know, just do not rush it because if it doesn't uh, brown e evenly all around, then it's going to be kind of like doughy on the inside and uncooked, and you won't get the delicious flavor that you're looking for. Once it comes out, you want it to cool a little bit, and then uh, when it cools, it's still really hot for me to handle, but you want to run a, a butter knife all around the edges in here and so that way it'll release any dough that's kind of stuck onto the pan. And then we're going to take it out. Ta-da! Look how beautiful that is. There we go. I'm going to let it cool for another about 15 or 20 minutes before I slice into it. But look at how beautiful it looks. Look at the top. 
I like the contrast and color between the green and the yellow zucchini. And you can slice into this and just serve it as is with a nice, beautiful salad on the side and you are good to go. This is beautiful. I'm going to post a link to the recipe down below, www.demetrasdishes.com. Make sure you check it out and you make it. This is a beautiful dish to serve for Mother's Day, so make it for your mom or for somebody special. And uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thumbs up this video, subscribe so you don't miss any other recipes. Share pictures with me on Instagram and Facebook. I love to see your recreations. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.